just like blind Bartimaeus, there's always going to be those that stand on the wayside. Come on, talk for Tell him to be quiet. He don't deserve his sight. And when people mess up, you got folks standing on the sidelines. I know what you did. I know how you messed up. All right, all right, all right. You need to hear the message we preached last night. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The only message Jesus ever wrote. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm sure there's somewhere in your world that you messed up as well. All right. Yes. Honey, we don't need to try to tear them down. The Bible says no, if one is taken into the no, fault, the Bible says restore them lest you also be tempted. Amen. Are you hearing me today? Right. Right. This church, you, I, I, I'm preaching to the heart of God to this congregation. I'm going to tell you the future of this church in just the next few months. I, I'm going to tell you what God wants to do and make this congregation. This is going to be a house of restoration. He's going to restore the year that the caterpillar, that the cake of worm, that the palm of worm, that his great army destroyed. God, go to restore some things in this house. And Jesus said, I don't care how carnal you've got it done. I don't care how much you messed up. I've come to restore your word. Jesus said, I don't care how far you've wandered away from the flock. I still want to restore your world today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My God. My God. He called He called Abaha. Sure, it was the sheep's decision to wander from the flock. But God loves his people, and regardless of what others think of or feel, God will go places that you never thought he would go. And none of what anybody else thinks, God will go to the very pits of hell, amen, to drag you out of the clutches of Satan's grip himself. You hear me today, God, David said, though I made my bed in hell, he said, God, You cannot outrun how far a shepherd will go to reach you. God will go places that you never thought he would. He will forgive some of the dumbest mistakes we could ever make. Failures that we made that Amen. The wrong choices. Yeah. And all we can say is all oh, my fault. Yeah. I did it. Yeah. I want you to understand that the shepherd, the God that you serve, is one that wants to restore the fallen sheep, even though right. it was their own flesh that got them in the condition that they are in today. Amen. Come on. Come on. Amen. Come on. I want you to understand that God wants to restore you today, sir. Yes, sir. God wants to restore you today, ma'am. Yes, hey, Amen. Whatever it takes, whatever he's got to do. Hell, are you hearing me right now? The devil may have lied to you. He may have put some thoughts in your mind. But I'm going to speak a word into your heart and a word into your spirit. I'm going to tell that devil to get his lousy, filthy, grimy palms off of you. You belong. And the shepherd said, I come to this house because I want to restore and I want to reach somebody today. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Or maybe it was the influence of the enemy. Because what the enemy wants to do with all of us is to lead us away from the flock. And the enemy wants to single you out. He is not done. He understands the principle yes, he does. written in Ecclesiastes. Yes, he does. Two are better than one because they have a good reward right. for their labor. Yeah. For if the one fall, the uh, a man, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat 
But how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. If he can lead you away from good, godly fellowship. All right, all right, come on, come on. Ha, are you hearing me today? I said if he can lead you away from good, godly fellowship, and if he can lead you away, amen, from being faithful to God's house. Why you need church? You need preaching. You know why you need preaching? Preaching will increase your faith. Faith coming by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And that the devil can keep you. But church, he'll tear down your faith. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He will. Amen. Yes, he will. He will destroy your faith. Yeah. Honey, you better position yourself where you can be faithful to the house of God. Because I'm telling you what the devil wants you to do. Or wants to do is get a hold of you and lead you away from the flock. He wants to put things in your spirit and things in your heart that you know deep down they're not right. But honey, if you don't have the word to combat against those things, honey, you'll walk away from the most precious thing that The devil's a liar. He's a thief. He's a conniver. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if he can lead you away from being faithful to God's house and get you interested in something that will draw you away from the flock, he understands that when one sheep is isolated, when they become an island to themselves, that this sheep becomes vulnerable. That's right. When there is no one there to fight for and with them, they are weak and they are subject to fall. Right, right. Amen. That's why we got to be faithful to the house of God. Honey, we're on the last stage. We're the closing moments, and we don't need to be making excuses as to why we can't go to God's house, why we can't be faithful to the house of the Lord. You better start finding reasons why you need to be in God's house, why you need to be in God's presence. Honey, you better start making excuses why you can't, amen, be out doing this and you can't be out doing that. I gotta be in God's house. I'm a little weak. I'm a little. Amen. We need church. We need one another. But sometimes our enemy gets the best of us. Sometimes his devices are more than we can handle and wander off because we have allowed ourselves to get into a position where the enemy can influence us, can put things into our life that will lead us away from the flock. All right. Come on. Bye. 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 And once again, it was our carelessness that led us into the trap a strain from the flock. Nobody did it to us. We fell prey either to our flesh, to our curiosity, to our rebellion, to our self-will, to our independence, right. or we fell prey to the lies of the enemy. Right. Yeah. My God. But I want you to hear the voice of this preacher, the voice of this under-shepherd. I'm not your shepherd today. This is your shepherd. But I got the heart of a shepherd. Yes, sir. Yes, and God will go to the great lengths to forgive. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Amen. I don't care how much yes, you messed you up. Yes. 
God will forgive you. That's right. Yes, sir. He will go to great lengths to heal. I don't care how bad it hurts. Your world may have been ripped apart. And there is a childhood story, Humpty Dumpty, yeah. how he fell off the wall. Right. The story said all the king's horses and all the king's men could not put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Amen. Can I propose to you today, it doesn't matter how broken it is. It doesn't matter how many pieces it's in today, the shambles. I want to tell you today that in the kingdom of God, there are no Humpty Dumpties. Right. And it's not so broken that God cannot put it back together again. Uh, it's not so hurt that God cannot heal it once again. He's a healer today. Hear me today. I don't care how broken it is. God's a healer. There's a bulb in Gilead. There's a healer in the house. There's a God that can. And there's a God that will today. He will go to great lengths to restore, go to great lengths just for one sheep that has allowed themselves to wander from the flock. Sometimes we allow ourselves to get to the place where we feel nobody cares, nobody wants to help, amen. And we get to the place where we feel that everything and everybody is against us. But you need to hear me today. Amen. God loves you. And God gave himself for you. He sacrificed. He gave. He has gone and will continue. Amen. To go to great lengths to make sure. Amen. That you stay in church. That one day you walk on streets of gold. To make sure you don't go to hell. To make sure by anything in life. Honey, I want you to know today that the great shepherd, the good shepherd, he will go to great leagues and do whatever it takes today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My God, in the name of Jesus. Come on, Sister Davis, I'm just about done. Thank you, Lord. I pray that you will come. Why don't you feel after the Lord right now in Jesus' name? Ooh. Come on, I need an intercessor right now. I'm not done just yet. I need somebody to intercede and pray right now. God wants to do a work in this house. Oh, the devil doesn't want this to happen today. Come on, church, it's time to pray. I need an intercessor right now. I need a prayer warrior right now. I need somebody that really knows how to pray and touch the very hem of God's garment today. Come on, church, it's time to pray at the Holy Ghost. He Why don't we stand on our feet right now? I'm just about finished and I'm going to have an altar call. You see, the devil is a liar. Brother West, nobody is against us. The church wants us to be saved. Your pastor wants you to be saved. God has proven his measure of love over and over and over again. And if you will respond to the call and the hands of the shepherd, it doesn't matter what you have done, what kind of mess you have made or may have fallen into, how far you may have wandered away in this house right now is the shepherd's call. Yes, sir. In this house right now is the love of God. In this house right now is the tender touch of a shepherd that will go much further than you ever could imagine. I asked the question this morning, how far will a shepherd go? Come on, come on, come on. Brother Driscoll, in reality, nobody knows. Because every time one of his beloved sheep wandered away, 
He always traveled the distance. Right. Right. And he always made the journey. He will go whatever length is required to reach you today. Yes, sir. I can't answer the question My God. of how far a shepherd will go. Oh. All I can tell you is that he'll show up even at your lowest moment That's right, when nobody else will That's right, That's right. These altars are open today. And the shepherd's reaching for somebody's heart. He's tugging on somebody's. Uh, why don't we come to this altar right now? Uh, why don't we come to this altar and reach out to Jesus? The shepherd's reaching for somebody right now. There's a restorer in the house. There's a God that wants to wrap his arms around you, sir. Wants to wrap his arms around you, man. That wants to restore some things in your world today. Delivered. 